Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be laying stone. So what you're watching now is us setting up. We're laying stone around these round pillars. These round pillars were put here in the park as bases for these beautiful eagle statues that were cut out of trees. And we're just going to go over some of the problems and the unique situations you find yourself in while you're trying to lay flat stone around the circumference of a pillar around what is it a cylinder that one you can see we have a bunch of stone already laid on it the first step we have to do is prepare the surface of what we're going to lay the stone up against today we have thanks thanks kenzie yeah. today we have concrete and you can see these lines these lines in the concrete are from the forms that this was poured into those forms leave behind a little bit of a uh what would you call it residue yeah residue of some kind to not stick to the concrete. The problem with that is it also makes everything else not stick to it. So what we have to do is wash it off with, we're gonna do acid. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's the first step in a bucket with the brush. Here's my sister. I'm gonna hand her this open container of acid. She's not wearing gloves or any safety gear whatsoever. Go ahead. <laughs> That's probably good. So what we're using here Muriatic acid. I got this from just one of the big box stores. And all I do is I put, I don't know, four inches of water in a bucket and then half a cup of this stuff in that, in that four inches of water in a five gallon bucket. And that seems to wash the surface pretty dang well. When we're done with that, we will rinse this off with a hose and then basically do the exact same thing with this acrylic fortifier. You add this, it's about the same amount, just a few glug, 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 glugs into about four inches of water and brush it on the exact same way. I'm not gonna show you that part because it's redundant. So what I like to do, you're supposed to add this in with the mix when you mix your mortar. And I do that, but I also add this to the water and brush it onto the wall, uh, kind of act as acts as a primer. You need mortar to lay, to lay stone. And is it different if you lay stone versus block? Yeah, the, uh, you'd use the same, what is this? This is just it's Portland lime and sand. That's all that's in this bag. And it's pre-mixed in this bag. We used to have to mix it by hand, the sand from a pile, the Portland from a pile, and the lime from a pile. All into a huge mixer. Yeah, but they just have it in a bag now, which is great. I don't want these stone to pop off ever. So, I have this large format tile mortar it's tile mortar and tile mortar i don't know why i'm not a scientist but tile mortar bonds way stronger is what i'm told for a bucket i just dump in a couple tile mortar scoops oh yeah then the glue that we saw earlier however much you want i guess <laughs> <laughs> the paddle mixer here it's the easiest way to do it for me there's already water in here, by the way. <laughs> We're in Colorado, and we have to add a lot of water throughout the day. Yeah, all the time. We are about to start a new pillar. We're going to be putting stone up against you know, that floor at the ground level. Basically four things we're dealing with, the concrete on the ground, the concrete pillar we're laying up against, the stone we're laying, and the cement we're using to lay it with. All of these things expand and retract at different rates under different temperatures. Can you see one of those things? Thank you, mysterious hand. <laughs> Not a good idea to put these straight down onto the floor, onto the ground. If the ground swells, and this doesn't, it'll pop the stone off. I like to put a little bit of a spacer this high off. I'm gonna mud the back of this and set it up on a spacer like that. And then when I'm done, I'll remove this, pull it out, and that stone will be up off the floor, up off the ground. This is just a sill you'd put between your like, concrete foundation and bottom sill plate while you're building a house. It works great here and it squishes a little bit. Spaces between the stone, that's called the joint. The joint is where the whatever you're laying meets the next one. You don't want one joint to go too far before it's broken up by another rock. You can see there's this vertical joint that comes all the way up here. 
it just doesn't look as good. This one isn't a problem problem. It still looks nice. It's a nice looking wall, but I wish I would have broken this joint maybe here, sent a stone to cross it. This is the stone I want to put in this hole. It will match the height of this rock until it dies into this one, but it's too long for the hole you can see, so we got to cut it. So generally just mark where I need to cut it and let's go to the saw station. so dry and hot that we got to keep spraying things down or else it'll just suck the moisture right out of this uh, mud and the rock will pop off but if we keep it wet down it'll stick on there pretty well this is a particular type of stone yep it's called telluride stone and it's quarried in telluride telluride colorado is it more expensive than like if you just got some regular stone at, at the block yard or probably not by a lot the thing with Telluride stone. It's kind of a kind of a bragging right to get Telluride stone. Is it is it unique versus other stone that you've worked with? Yeah, but like yeah, yes, yes, the answer is yes. However, every stone quarry is unique. Telluride stone is just another unique stone. Cool. Whatever whatever quarry any other stone comes out of is also unique to that quarry. This is the next stone I want to lay, either this high or jump up. It doesn't matter either way right here i have a jump back here though so i kind of want to keep this line going for a little bit so that will go there this joint isn't going to line up with any other joint so i'm crossing joints hopefully that makes sense but that's kind of what what the goal is So why do you break it instead of cutting all the way through? <sighs> this is a natural stone. The saw blade makes a very clean cut. So I only cut down to a certain point and then snap it so that when you look at it face on, there's still that natural looking line. We definitely don't want all of this extra here. And we're gonna come back and, and go through the joint, but we're just gonna grab the extra mud so we can reuse it. <laughs> okay, car. But for real, like why do they have to rub all over? And I like decorating a cake. And then we're gonna let that sit up. And... Kind of. Kind of hard to explain, but we let it sit yeah, long enough it. that it's still a little bit wet, but it's dry. Because if we try to mess with it right now, all you do is smear it around. Okay, also, what were you saying about a thimble? Oh, because the concrete doesn't feel good on your fingers after a while. <laughs> It'll cut them open. <laughs> so you know how when you sew, you can put a thimble on so that you don't hurt it by the needle? It's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, they're coming useful. <laughs> then, a thimble? I mean, well, kind of like a finger covering in a way. A glove? Well, oh, yeah. Please bring the kids because they have a lot of fun. Keegan, that is great.
is round, these are flat. That's what makes it kind of difficult if you lay around the circle, right? Mm -hmm. So, and the stone comes in all kinds of various lengths. This is a very long one, and as you can see, it's not really as expected. It's not really going to just suck right up onto the pillar. A short one will do a lot better. That's almost a flat wall to the short little one. What we want is all kinds of various lengths. But there's a limit. You can't have this long of a stone on this wall. So we got to cut almost every one of these long ones down to a manageable size while still trying to keep like variations in the length of the stone. Want to do acid? Here's some extra concrete and it doesn't just come off with rubbing. So we want to wash this and make it look better. What we are trying to figure out is if we use just water in this area versus acid on this side, a mixture of acid and water, which one will come out cleaner? Will there be a difference? Is there really a need for the acid? Water side still has segments of the dried concrete on it. The acid side actually looks pretty clean. But if you see this compared to up here, that's a lot cleaner. Looks like we're washing with acid. Looks like we're doing acid all day. Yeah, the Doritos on my teeth. Right there. what we've learned. First, prepare the surface that your stone will be adhered to. Make sure it is clean. Second, mix mortar with large format tile thinset and acrylic fortifier for a strong bond. Third, make sure the bottom course of stone is spaced off the ground. Fourth, keep the joints between the stone from extending too long. Fifth, keep all surfaces wet or at least damp. Sixth, to keep the cut edges of the stone looking natural, don't cut all the way through the face. Instead, cut most of the way and then break the stone. 7. Always clean excess mortar off the stone while it's still wet. 8. Be sure the stone is not too long for the circumference of the pillar. 9. Fill in joints and brush away excess for a finished, proper look. 10. After all mortar has set up, wash your finished product with a mixture of water and acid. Finally. If you have found this video helpful or educational, please consider pressing the like button to subscribe for more helpful content.